so glad for those of you who are joining us on Facebook and online. I miss you guys so much. But we are going to continue talking about the best day ever and getting ready for Easter because that's so exciting. But I want to start first because we're on Facebook Live. We can communicate with each other today, so I'm super excited. So what I would like you to do is, if you are watching with your family, comment with your favorite thing that you and your family did this last week together, whether it was take a walk, play a board game, have family dinners, whatever it is. I would, I would love to see your comments um, saying what you're doing together. But then I have a demonstration for you. So I've got two unwilling volunteers to come on up. Come on up, unwilling volunteers. They're going to help me demonstrate something today. So this is better. I get to pick on Tim. This is awesome. We have been talking about, and I, you sure my, you can't read my shirt on the camera, but it says faith over fear because we are talking about your faith being bigger than your fears. So we are going to show you how, just how that works. So Tim is here, and I'm going to pick on Tim. And when I'm picking on Tim, he's wavering. Do you see? His faith gets shaky. He can't go too far away because I'm just going to pull him this way and push him that way. And I can keep picking on him. And his whole body moves. His faith gets shaky. But the great thing is we have the power of prayer to put between, between us. When you pray, when you pray to God, God, see now, Look, it's like a brick wall. I cannot get to Tim because when we pray, God is bigger than our fears. So round of applause to my helpers. Thank you. There, yes, he has to get his extra bow in. So that was awesome. I want you to remember that during this time because our faith can be bigger than our fears. During this time where we're not able to do everything we want, there's a blessing in that. God has a reason. God has a purpose for everything that happens. And I really believe that right now, God wants to make our family stronger and make our faith stronger so that we can spend time taking to do that deep breath. And in that still moment, praying to God spending time with our families, getting to know each other again. We're usually so busy running here, there, and everywhere. We don't get time to sit and just talk and spend time together, play games together, go for a walk, talk about our fears, talk about our faith. So hopefully you can see the blessing in, the, in disguise in all of this. Next, we are going to play a little game. And you can play along at home because you can comment. So we are going to play Pictionary because we're going back to the best day ever. We are getting ready for Easter, and Easter is the best day ever. That's the day that Jesus was resurrected. We celebrate that. That's awesome. So we're going to play Pictionary. As I'm drawing, you get to comment down below and guess what I'm drawing as soon as you get it. I'm sure with my drawing skills it's going to be a little more challenging than we believe. But we're going to do it. It's going to be awesome. Are you ready? Here's our first drawing. All right. Hopefully you can see this. Is it showing up? Oh, that's a little bit sad. Let's see if you guys can figure out what I'm making. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out what I'm making. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, you guessed, I hope that you guessed, that this is a plate and some utensils that got a little extra large because after, at, Jesus had a meal with his disciples, the Last Supper. After they finished eating, Jesus and his friends went to a garden to pray. That's when Judas showed up with a crowd of people ready to arrest Jesus. Judas had been one of Jesus' closest friends friends, but he decided to help people who wanted to hurt Jesus instead of acting like a true friend to him. That's so sad and scary. That's one of the saddest parts, I think. Are you ready for the next picture? We're ready to keep telling our Bible story. Let's hope that this goes away. Is it going away? Is it? He hope yeah, it is. Yay! Okay. You all know how weird I am. So I feel like I can be truly just my weird self. Okay, I don't know if I can draw over the wet stuff, but I'm going to try. I may have to move over. But 
I'll draw up here. This one's easy. <laughs> if you can see it, I bet you guessed it was a cross because it is a cross. So we know that Jesus had never done anything wrong. He is the only person who has ever lived who had zero sin. But even though he had zero sin, he was arrested and taken away. They beat him up. They yelled at him. They made fun of him. They made him wear a crown of thorns. And they nailed Jesus to a cross where he died, which is so sad. Part of why I think that this story is so important right now is we're living in kind of some fearful times. Those were really fearful times for the disciples and for Jesus. Jesus knew when he was praying, he knew what was going to happen to him, but he knew that he had to do that for us, for us to see the hope at the end of the tunnel, right? We, sometimes we have to live through the darkness to see the light, which is it can be sad and it can be scary, but we need to lean into God during those times and pray. Which brings me to my next picture, if you can see them. I feel like there used to be a show when I was little. I think it had Picture Picture on the wall. I don't remember what it was called. Picture Picture. Do you remember? Was that what it was? Picture Pages. Okay. Oh, when I draw large, it somehow gets really distorted. Where's my sad face? Did you guess it was a sad face? So this is going along with people didn't know yet about that Jesus really would come back. They hoped he would. He said he would, right? But they're living through these dark times. Is he who he said he is? Is he going to be resurrected? I think there was a reason that it took time for him to come back. He couldn't just die and immediately stand up because then people would say, well, you have naysayers, right? Who are going to say, well, he wasn't ever really dead. But he was actually put in the tomb for three days. And that helps people to see Jesus was who he said he was. So even though they were sad and they were scared, something great is coming. So that leads us to our next picture, 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 picture. I feel like I need a sound effect. can tell I taught kindergarten. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. There. All right. You could kind of see. So, well, here's my challenge. All right. See if you can guess what I drew. If you can see it. Did you guess the tomb? If you guess the tomb, you're right. Ding, 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 ding. So after Jesus died, they put his body in a tomb, and they sealed it with a giant stone. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll that stone away. So we're going to erase that, that big stone and make that go away. Hopefully you're playing along with me. I hope you are. There it goes. So that it was rolled away. It was too big for one person to have rolled it, right? So this is awesome. Now people are going to be able to come and see. So our next picture, we'll see. Oh, no, it's too wet there. I'll go over here. Don't make fun of me. You know, Tim Chandler is still here. You think he's making fun of me, guys? <laughs> okay, did you guess an angel? Here's my sad little angel. <laughs> so, an angel rolled the stone away so everyone could see that Jesus wasn't in there. There were women that came to the tomb first, and the angel said, don't be afraid. He has risen from the dead. Then they were filled with joy because guess what? It was the best day ever. Now, I do think they probably felt a little afraid. We've been talking about these uncertain times. I think if an angel appeared to me, I might be a little afraid at first. I'm sure those women were afraid. But when they stopped and they leaned into what that angel was saying and they listened and they realized that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, the tomb was empty, they rejoiced and ran to tell everybody about it, right? Because this was the greatest news ever. 
the greatest news that God could have given us. So these two women went and they told everybody they could. How do you think those people were feeling after they realized that Jesus was no longer in the tomb? Do you think they were full of joy? I think they had the biggest celebration for the best day ever, right? Because we realize that Jesus was alive. Jesus lived and died for our sins, and we get to be with God in heaven for all eternity. And that's amazing. So yes, they lived through some really dark days, and they were sad, and they were scared. They weren't sure what was going to happen next, and we can really relate to that right now. But then, at the end of that tunnel was the best day ever and the best news ever right that Jesus died to cover our sins so that we get to be go to heaven and live with God for eternity so hopefully you stay with us if you have been coming to our series we're going to do our need to know today which is Jesus is the best ever so hopefully you said that with me at home let's do it one more time Jesus is the best ever so I hope that you enjoyed our story today. I hope that this week you can find that peace. When you're feeling scared and you're nervous, find that time. Take that deep breath. Live in that stillness for a minute. Pray. Pray to God because God in our prayer is what's going to strengthen us against our fear. Just like when I was pushing and picking on, on Tim, but then Adam stood in the way, right? Because our prayer and our connection to God is what's going to help us overcome our fear because our faith is bigger than our fear. Spend time this week with your family. Do something new. Go for a hike. Go for a walk. Maybe create an outside game with your family. Talk about God. Talk about what you're scared. Pray together. And I hope you have a great week. I miss you. I can't wait to see you and celebrate the best day ever with you. Bye. Have a great week.